but oh my gosh there was a point in this book where I was just dying of laughter it was hilarious and it's all about turkeys and I'm not gonna say more than that because turkeys hello my loves and thank you for joining me it's Kirsten and we're doing a weekly vlog but I am on nights so every update is coming to you in the evening so yesterday I did my first 12 hour night shift, thankfully that's the only 12 hour and the rest of the week is just the usual 8 hours. I'm actually up earlier than what I'd hoped to be but I'm planning meet my partner for a little bit, have something to eat, come back, nap a bit more and then go to work because uh, yeah we gotta get through this week. While I was at work yesterday though I did pick up a book and we're doing a week of rereads I think. I really enjoyed it last week and I just... As I mentioned last week, rereads are something that is just so easy to follow and because I am working a night shift and it's going to take me the first few days to get used to it, decided to go with the reread that you guys picked for the month and that is Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuinston. This is so much fun. So I first read this, well technically I listened to it because I listened to it as an audio book and then I picked up the physical copy. So this is my first time reading it physically and I'm loving it. So I got up to chapter 5 yesterday, page 109, and it's just so much fun. I'm loving seeing the romance blossom because this is a contemporary romance, although it's set in like an alternative version of our world. And we have Alex, the son of the first lady in the White House, and we have Prince Henry, a prince of England, and they meet at the start of this book at a royal wedding but uh, some things happen it's a genuinely an accident but obviously with all the press there and everything they blow it out of proportion and um, they end up destroying a wedding cake <laughs> so now they have to sh pretend that they are best of friends for the press and the media to ease relations between these two great countries things go from there because they don't particularly like each other but where I've just finished it is where they've just had their first kiss and it's just like love it although to be fair the first kiss like Alex is still like wait what so yeah it's really interesting I think this is really good you have he Prince Henry who is gay and you have Alex who is discovering that he is bi and so a lot of this book you're following him and his journey to realize I am bi and this this is okay and just that self-discovery is really good but oh my gosh there was a point in this book where I was just dying of laughter it was hilarious and it's all about turkeys and I'm not gonna say more than that because turkeys the turkey bit like I was reading it and I was giggling out loud I was having the time of my life and my colleague was just sitting there like are you okay and I'm just like it's hilarious it's so much fun and I was just dying of laughter. Fantastic, absolutely loved this book. So yeah, I am actually annotating, although because I am doing this at night, I'm not annotating loads because in all honesty, this whole book is one big annotation because I just find it funny or heartwarming or just there's always something and I love it. So yeah, I feel like if I wasn't on a night shift, this whole book would be annotated. As it is, I am doing some underlining, some little notes, and I dogged the turkey bit because that is honestly just tears of laughter. It's so good. Oh, and where Alex has gone to the palace to have breakfast and do like a weekend of showing how him and Prince Henry are like best friends. And um, he's sitting there about to have breakfast and his, one of his inner thoughts is, what kind of garbage country eats bland beans on white toast for breakfast? He can't decide if his Mexican blood or his Texan blood is more offended. And I died because it's just like, it's so true. What is with us with beans on toast? <laughs> I, I don't understand. Oh, hilarious. I love this book. I'm having the time of my life and I'm so glad I wrote this one on the night shift with me because it's it's easy to read, it's fun, it's endearing, like I'm loving seeing everything blossom between the two of them, their preconceptions, especially Alex's preconceptions about Henry and how, you know, maybe they aren't quite so what he thought. It's good. Really enjoying it. It's just a fun time. So yeah, this I have to admit, this is the book where I went 
oh, okay contemporary romance can be really good love it absolutely adore it I mean I say that to be fair I've only read boyfriend material after this one which again I absolutely loved so if you have any recommendations based on the fact that I love this book please put them in the comments below because I'm adoring this this is so much fun so yeah so I plan on reading this over the next few nights but yeah I don't have loads that I'm planning to do this week because I am doing seven nights so this vlog is going to be more of a relaxed book chatty update rather than lifestyle stuff because literally it's going to be go to work at 10 o'clock at night come home at seven in the morning sleep that's it we'll see we'll see what happens oh I hope you all all doing well um let me know what you guys are currently reading because I'm always intrigued actually I'm always on the lookout for more books and stuff so yeah that's going to be the question want to know what book you are currently reading okay right I've got to go. I am feeling actually rather well rested at the moment which is lovely so I've slept for a good six hours so we're now in the afternoon and I probably will nap a little bit more before I go to work just because I've got to stay awake for a while so anyway the night shifts are going well I have for the last couple of days been reading red white and royal blue as we know I have a hundred pages left to go because I have been limiting myself to a hundred pages a day I have to admit limiting myself to 100 pages a day is just so good and yet such a tease at the same time <laughs> because okay so the benefit of doing this is that I'm not binge reading through this like not rush reading because in all honesty I know I could just sit down and read this all in one night shift and done and I would have loved it however by slowing myself down and only allowing myself to read 100 pages at a time one I'm obviously extending that period of enjoyment to last me like four days because it is a 400 page book instead of just the one night and also it means that each part after the 100 pages I'm finding that when I do this with books I can actually think over each of that segment properly like I can really formulate some actual thoughts about it rather than it just being the whole book in general I can actually break it down into different parts and think okay what did I like about this part was there anything that could have been a bit better etc I just think it works so much better and I, I just I just prefer it I think it works well for me trying to just do my reviews a little bit better and I think that's why I've been having so much more to talk about whereas before when I was doing my vlogs I was getting to a point where I'm like I don't even know what to talk about in my vlogs anymore because I would just sit there binge the books and then be like oh um so this happened but not be able to explain it properly because I've read it so fast that everything's just one big blur anyway that's why I'm now limiting myself to 100 pages a day and also the fact that it is so good to have a book that you know you're excited to get to so excited for the last 100 pages there's been so much that's been happening obviously when I last spoke to you we had just had our first kiss which is lovely and then you have everything that comes with it so we have the fact that Henry then backs off completely because he's like oh no I didn't mean to do this you know I was a bit reckless and stuff and then Alex is then like oh my god what does this mean for me and obviously they're both in positions of power and politics where everything in their life is scrutinized and whether we like it or not having the prince of england be gay is not something that would be widely accepted i would like to say it's different today but uh, i feel like that's wishful thinking um so it's nice to have an alternative world where we can have that sort of wishful thinking which is lovely and then obviously everything for alex dealing with the fact that am i into guys am i straight like what having that conflict and internal crisis while he tries to figure himself out is really good and he goes to a lot of different people being like what do you think and they rightly so say we cannot tell you we cannot make this decision for you it is your decision to make and loved that 
And then in the bit that I read yesterday, we have these obviously two boys that have decided, you know what? Yeah, we do have feelings for each other and they're gonna run with it. And it was just, it was so cute. Uh, but yeah, so I've got the last 100 pages to go. Very excited, absolutely loving this. Loving the fact that I'm actually annotating this because I know this is never gonna be a book that I give away. Yeah, I just love it. I am keeping it simple. I think if I haven't mentioned, then obviously I will now. And if I have, then um, we'll edit this out. But I'm just keeping it simple to underlining bits that I like, writing in any thoughts that I have, which is normally just like one or two words, or sometimes just doing these little, almost like brackets. If I like a particular paragraph, but don't particularly want to underline and have it masses of underline in this book, which to be fair, this whole book would be underlined. I'm undecided about whether I want to use tabs or not. It's something that... I love it when they look like in books with all their tabs hanging out but at the same time I feel like this whole book would be a tab. I just enjoy it and enjoy so many parts of it for so many different reasons like it's funny, it's heartwarming and it's also a little bit sad in some places and makes you think in other places so there's just it would just be one big tab. Plus I'm not that sort of person that will go back to a particular tab and just read it. Like I'll read you guys a little sentence or two but then that's it. If I'm going to go back to a book, I'm going to read the whole thing and not just one little bit. So yeah, tabs, undecided. Don't think I'm going to do that bit. There's so many like one-liners and everything in this that is just perfect. It's, yeah, absolutely lovely. So, say for instance, this one sentence here, someone else's choice doesn't change who you are. I mean, in context with the book, that's a big thing. But also just in general, that sentence on its own is like, it's so true. And it's something that, you know, you are not responsible for other people's choices and just because of their choice it doesn't change who you are. It just, it's things like that. Loving it. Absolutely loving it. I've rambled for a long time about this book and it's just, it's so good. It's so good. But moving on, we have my final piece of mail and this is the final bit that I've actually bought myself. This just took a little while to actually come. And this is the dress that last week I was saying I ordered a pink and a blue and then the blue dress came in pink instead of blue. Here's hoping that the pink dress is actually pink. It is pink. It's that same dusky pink, which I'm very excited about. But this time we have very long sleeves, which yes. Ah, oh, perfect. Okay, so this is another one that's kind of going, as I've mentioned in previous vlogs, that kind of cottagey core type look and it's just ah, so pretty so yeah okay now that we have all of the dresses i think we'll do a dress try on with all of these because ah so excited okay so let's go and do that and then after that i have a few hours before i have work so i'm probably just gonna chill i'm actually undecided do i just read this now instead of waiting for work and take a different book into work I'm not sure. I don't even know what I'm reading next, to be honest. Anyway, let's go try on these dresses. two more night shifts left and I'm so excited but okay what have I been up to the last few days well sleeping actually uh, but then at night I have finished red white and royal blue absolutely loved this I mean like I said this book is just so much fun I really enjoy it there's some really powerful quotes in here and everything I just loved it but 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 I am a little bit fussy because the last bit of this book, like Electra, I love 90% of this book, but then the last actual ending of it, not so much, because it's more focused on the election, because we have Alex's mother up for another four years, is she going to win the election, and all of that that's going on, 
and it's okay but it's not why I read the book. I mean it works well to wrap up that storyline because that is a big part of this book is the election campaign and everything so it is good to have it in there but I'm more interested in obviously Henry and Alex's love and their storyline than the actual background stuff. So that's just me being fussy yet again. Although I know a few people have said that they don't like this book because it's so unrealistic in terms of it being so hopeful and it kind of highlights how we actually have so much further to go in our society and just being accepting and everything. And you know, I can see that, but also I like this book because it is so hopeful and enjoyable and just happy. So yeah, overall, very much enjoyed this book. Very pleased I went with the reread and that you guys picked it. But yeah, like I said, I'm just being nitpicky as always, like with Electra. Both of them are amazing books, definitely my favourites. This is like a comfort read for me, something that I will pick up if I'm feeling a little bit down or a bit tired or something because it automatically makes me feel happier when I'm reading it. And I don't know if it was actually on my favourite books from 2021. I think it should be because it was fantastic. If it's not, it definitely needs to be because this is such a good book. I really, really enjoyed it. It was just, yes, love it. So I finished this up. Wednesday night and then Thursday so yesterday was my birthday uh, I stayed at my partner's house during the day slept he cooked me a lovely dinner which was great and I did start a new book so I decided I was I'm in an iron because I have one book left on my TBR but it is a classic and I was just like you know what too tired for that it's nearing the end of my night shift week and I'm so tired and I was like no I just don't have the brain power to read a classic so instead I went with the other option that you guys had for the month which was My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell this is a reread but I am enjoying this this is a darker read and I will say actually the votes between this one and Red White and Royal Blue were surprisingly close a lot of people seem to want to hear my thoughts about both of them more than happy to read both but yeah this is a much darker book I am um, it doesn't have chapters like number chapters but I'm on page 105 we have two different storylines we're following Vanessa in 2017 when she's an adult and how a previous teacher that she had is now going through trials of being alleged for doing abuse to his students um, and there's all of that it's all part of the movement of women coming forward um, that did I think it happened in 2017 there was a lot of media focus on women coming forward about sexual assault um, and the English teacher that Vanessa had is one of those people however for her she doesn't see it as assault she doesn't see it as abuse she sees it as a relationship that defined her life and then you get 17 years ago when she was 15 years old and meeting her teacher for the first time and everything that gets developed from there. I'm not gonna lie, the last bit that I read was so difficult to read, like it's quite graphic and it's just, it, it, I mean it was, it was uncomfortable. It's well done, I, I will give it that and there's a lot of points in here where you see the manipulation, you see how he's actually enforcing his ideas on her and how he's manipulated her very slowly and the fact that as a child you can see how they wouldn't have thought that and how they would have thought that I am the one with all the power. So it kind of starts with him giving her lots of different reading material um, that are all more sexually desire based and then finally giving her Lolita and she realises that she has this power because that's what she's taken from it, how he cannot help the way he feels and everything and how he's being so brave by doing all these things and so she starts accepting all this other stuff from him but you can see in the way that she freezes up constantly in the way that she doesn't want to do these things and is just saying how she feels like she should rather than it actually being something that she wants that how he's just manipulated her so well so it is really dark and also a bit sad because of the fact that when she is an adult like this relationship she had it still defines her life and how this sort of abuse stays with you it doesn't ever go away so yeah so it's it's very impactful very difficult read but I do enjoy it like I know it's I feel like enjoy is the wrong way of saying it but it's so well written and well crafted and you can see from her perspective of how she feels like this relationship was empowering to her and it was something that shaped her life and that's why she can never see it as abusive but 
also how it really was and how he as a teacher was in such a position of power and abused that power to manipulate this young girl and it's just it's very well done it, it's difficult read though I'm not gonna lie the last bit where I finished up was so so difficult um so trigger warnings galore because it's yeah, I mean, I'm only going to say one quote. I'm nothing, no one, nowhere, because that's what she has to think to get through what he's doing to her. And it's just the fact that she still sees this as it was an abuse, it was something that, yeah, just, yeah. Difficult read, but very well crafted and is something that I think is important to see how someone in that position of power can so easily influence and manipulate young people. Very difficult, but very good, which is weird to say. And I do have a couple of quick birthday gifts that I thought I would share with you. So my mum got me a book that I'd asked her for, which is Best Fairy Tales by Hans Christian Andersen. And it's this gorgeous Pan Macmillan edition with gold foiled edges. Oh, I was in love. I just, I saw this, adored it, really wanted it. I mean, even like the end pages is just stunning. And it's not all of his stories, but it's some of them. It's 32 stories, but it's stories that I really want to read. So like you have Thumbelina, The Little Mermaid, you have The Snow Queen, The Ugly Duckling, like these are all the stories that I was mainly interested in. I just, I can't wait to go through this. I think I'm really going to enjoy it. I'm going to do, I think, what I was doing with The Grimm's Fairy Tales, but I think I'm going to put The Grimm's Fairy Tales down because there's so many stories in here that I'm just not interested in and I haven't been vibing with it. And we're going to change it up so that the mornings I will be reading from this one. It is beautiful. I am so in love and I'm so so excited to read this one so. And then my mum also got me something which was absolutely hilarious. So last week I said about how I got myself a new phone case and how I loved that this was a little mouse ballerina and my mum had said to me how I was obsessed with Angelina Ballerina when I was little who is literally a mouse ballerina and so she got me an Angelina Ballerina plushie which is so cute. Oh, I love it so much. This is just adorable. So yeah, very happy with that. And not only that, but she also found the book set, which I oh, love it. And it's the original ones, like the original artwork ones that I read when I was younger and I'm so excited about it. So we have six of the stories. So you have Meet Angelina Ballerina, Angelina Ballerina at Ballet School, Angelina Ballerina Dresses Up, Angelina Ballerina Big Dreams, Centre Stage, and a Family Fun Day. I just, ah, I love it so much. I was having a little flick through and just the artwork and everything is just exactly what I remember. It was so lovely. So yeah, I'm actually really excited to have these. I think it's gonna be great. They even have like little stickers and everything in here, which I think is awesome. I just, yeah. I'm very excited and I think I'm going to have good fun reading through these. It's just, yeah, perfect. So I'm really happy with those actually. Got my little Angelina Ballerina bookcase. I'm very happy with that. Honestly, it's just so cute. I'm really, really excited. So yeah, I mean, come on, I may be 29, but that doesn't stop me from being a child at heart. So yeah very excited that's all the updates um yeah that that's it that's it we have work tonight i will be reading more of my dark vanessa this is only three just over 300 pages so i'm hoping to actually finish this on my last two nights which would be great and i'm so excited i'm nearing the end honestly but yeah so that's the plan we've had a nice just relaxing reread reading week which is what you need for a night shift because it's just too tiring otherwise so yeah very much enjoying my week of rereads yeah okay that's gonna be it for this update i'll probably update you again probably when i've actually finished this and then who knows we'll see okay i'm rambling i'm tired i actually need to go shopping and get something to eat at work tonight yeah all right that that's me done <laughs> it is a gorgeous rainy day which honestly I wouldn't normally say gorgeous to describe a rainy day but 
we have no more night shifts. Last night was my last one. So I got back home at eight in the morning this morning because getting home on a Sunday morning is not easy. Not easy at all. But it is now three o'clock in the afternoon. The family has gone out. So I have a very quiet house, which means you'll probably be seeing this outfit again. Oh, well, this top part of me again, doing a book haul video because it's quiet enough that I can actually film it and get it done. Having the rain is honestly just making me want to curl up in bed with a book to read, but we'll probably fall asleep and we're trying not to, so I'm not up all night. Anyway, tangent that you didn't need at all. I have finished my dark Vanessa. I did, I was gonna say enjoy my reread, but this is not a book you can enjoy. This is a book that forces you to look at some really difficult topics and doesn't hold back. And I like it for that. It's not a fun book. It's not an enjoyable book. It is a book that makes you realise how easy it is to dismiss people's claims simply because you get branded as someone that has an overexcited imagination or you know, teenage girls don't know what they're talking about and stuff and it's easy for them to misconstrue things that are actually happening and it's horrible and disgusting and it's worse because it's true and it's it's one of those books. It is a book that is so stark in its honesty and it's such a heavy book to read that I would really honestly advise not to read this book if you are not in the right mindset because it does not hold back but it is powerful and it talks not only about what Vanessa went through and her being groomed and all the post-traumatic stress from that but it also talks about how you can feel pressured into coming forward and telling your story and how if you don't want to do that and you don't want to face all of that pressure and people coming into your life and ripping it apart that you're then selfish because you know you could make the difference between it happening to another girl but it's also the same thing of like well yeah sure but that person's gone through a horrible experience why would they want to relive it and nobody being understanding in that light in saying this is somebody's life we shouldn't be picking it apart but how often people actually do how often the media does it's so difficult it's such a fine line to walk and especially in this where Vanessa is dealing with someone that is hounding her to tell her story and she's just like I, I can't I don't want to do this this is not something I want to do and then how she is called selfish and she's not being fair to others and things like that because of it and it's just like no, you cannot blame someone for them not wanting their life being picked apart by vultures, which is exactly what's going to happen. And which does happen to one of the girls who does come forward. She then gets death threats and all sorts. And again, it's horrible because it's so true. This is our society and it's, it's horrible. So it does, it does tackle a lot of darker subjects and not just around the grooming of this and everything that Vanessa goes through and the impact it still has on her later life. It's it's hard, it's difficult, but it's very powerful. Like Vanessa says in the end, is she has told herself for years that this was her love story because she cannot deal with it if it isn't that. But she does know because you see that a lot in her subconscious as she is older about how she detests what men are doing to these young girls and she has all of these flashbacks and tremors and just struggling to cope with everything that's happened and yet to get herself through it she convinces herself it was a love story and it's so heartbreaking but so well done and also I do think Vanessa is a bit of an unreliable narrator in a lot of this as well which also brings an extra element to the book which I don't think I picked up on so much the first time I read this but definitely the second time I read this I've noticed that a bit more that she is a bit unreliable and you can see her questioning herself and it's just it's good it's hard but it's a good one to unpack and all the messages that are in it and I don't think this could have been handled in a different way like I think it was done in a really again I don't want to use the word good because it's too dark for that but it was done in a more in a way to give everyone their voice and showcase how difficult things like this actually are to the people that are involved so 
yeah it, I, I enjoyed my reread of this again as I say enjoy is, is the wrong word but I took a lot from it and it was it was difficult and there's so many lines where I just I felt like crying and stuff for her because it's so heartbreaking but also by the end of the book you see the relief and the fact that this is going to be really hard but she's going to start getting her life and making something of it and not be defined by him and what he's done and so hard but she's trying and I like that it's a bit of a more hopeful ending to the book. So there we have it that was my week of rereads two very completely different rereads one that was just fun and heartwarming and just lovely and then one that's the complete opposite but something that I do think is very powerful and impactful and yeah if you're in the right headspace then yeah if not then please don't pick this up because I just don't think th there's a lot and it's a very graphic book so please please be careful going into it but I think overall I have enjoyed it I think the rereads are definitely what I needed this week because of the fact that night shifts being very tired and stuff having a reread was the way to go this week but I have one book left on my TBR for the month which I will be reading next week which I'm very excited about but for now we're gonna leave the video here so what do I even want to put as emoji of the day because honestly we didn't really do much oh we did try on all the dresses let's put a dress emoji because that was fun I feel like this whole week has just passed in a blur and I don't feel like I've done loads with my time to be quite honest because during the day I have just been sleeping so is what it is. I hope you all have had a good week regardless. Yeah okay I'm just gonna ramble because I just don't have too much to say and I've got stuff to do so I'm gonna go. If you have enjoyed this video don't forget to give it that thumbs up, subscribe, comment to let me know that you're here. Social media links will be linked below and I will of course catch you in the next one. Mm -hmm.